Hi, welcome back to the Physiology Playlist. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, we're going to do a, a comparison and contrast between type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. Okay, so every person has skeletal muscle. Okay, you could think of your bicep, your quadricep, abdominal muscles, any skeletal muscle. In that skeletal muscle, there's multiple kinds of muscle fibers, okay? So there are type 1 muscle fibers mainly and type 2, okay? Now there are other ones also, and there's actually multiple types of type 2. There's actually type 2A, type 2B. There's also a type 2DX. Um, we're mainly just going to concern ourselves ma mainly with the 2B, okay? And anything intermediate between those two is going to be more of a mixture of what we're going to talk about. So we're talking about type 1 and type 2B muscle fibers. If you've taken exercise physiology or anything like that, you've probably heard of these. Type 1 muscle fibers are smaller, um, and they don't produce as much force. All right? They're more suited for things like long-distance running, something like that. Rowing. Type 2 muscle fibers are larger. They're more adapted to lifting very heavy things, sprinting, um, more sports like MMA or something like that, okay? And you might say, oh, well, you see that bodybuilder on, on, um, on that YouTube video? He's like 270 pounds, 3% body fat. He's all type 2 muscle fibers. No. Every person, every skeletal muscle in a person is a mixture of the types of muscle fibers. It's just some people have a higher percentage of type 2, and some people have a, a greater percentage of type 1. But now we're going to look at the molecular basis of why type 2 muscle fibers do what they do better and why type 1 do what they do better. And it's in this table below. All right, so the first thing I wanted to go over is contraction of the muscle. All right, the main protein or enzyme that I need to contract a skeletal muscle is myosin. Now, of course, there's actin there too, but myosin is really important. Myosin catalyzes the following reaction. If I have adenosine triphosphate, and this is catalyzed by the myosin ATPase, it hydrolyzes ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate, and it's of course going to use a water molecule to do that. Okay, That's the reaction of myosin ATPase. All right, it turns out that this enzyme myosin ATPase is, has, has a much higher concentration in type 2 muscle fibers. In other words, this enzyme, there's a lot more of it in type 2. You see it's high in type 2. It's lower in type 1. All right? Now, here's my question. If there's more type, if there's more myosin ATPase in type 2 muscle fibers, what's their ATP consumption, lower or higher? Well, if myosin ATPase is breaking apart ATP, and there's more myosin ATPase in type 2, then there's more ATP consumption in type 2 also. And when it says energy utilization, really you could take energy and replace it with ATP. So there's more ATP utilization in type 2 muscle fibers. So there's more myosin, and there's more ATP utilization in type 2. There's a lot less ATP utilization in type 1. Okay? Now for mitochondria. All right, type two muscle fibers have a smaller amount of mitochondria. Okay, if you remember this, there's actually a, a video before this in the playlist somewhere where we talk about a, a, a metabolic roadmap. Okay, the metabolic roadmap, we look at all the various metabolic pathways and we talk about kind of what happens in each of those. Okay, we're gonna start with glucose, so I'm gonna do a very brief overview. We're gonna do glucose start with glucose, and we're going to do glycolysis, right? Glycolysis is the breakdown of sugar, and we're going to get pyruvate, right? Pyruvate, which is going to go into the mitochondria in the form of acetyl-CoA, and it's going to go in the TCA cycle, right? This is the TCA or Krebs cycle, right? And also remember, in the TCA, or in the mitochondria, excuse me, we have this thing in here called the electron transport chain, now, if you remember, in glycolysis, what do we get, ultimately? We get a net of 2 ATP from glycolysis, okay? 
From the TCA cycle, some people consider this, some people don't. We technically get a GTP, but that could be interconverted with ATP, okay? And technically, per glucose, this is 2 ATP. But per glucose for the electron transport chain, this is a net of usually some people consider about 32 to 36 ATP. So let's say 36 ATP to drive the point home, all right? So, glycolysis takes place in the cytosol. It does not take place in the mitochondria. Very important point. However, the TCA cycle, and much more importantly, the electron transport chain, where you get 36 ATP, that occurs in the mitochondria. So type 2 fibers have fewer mitochondria, and type 1 have more. So which fiber type produces more ATP? Well, it's type 1. Type 1 produces more ATP, right? because type 2 has fewer mitochondria. Type 1 have much more mitochondria, so they're able to produce much more of this 36 ATP because that's done in the mitochondria. Combine two things. Type 2 muscle fibers produce less ATP by this fewer mitochondria, but because of more myosin, they consume more per unit time. So they're consuming more ATP in one second, and they're producing fewer ATP in that one second. So they're going to run out of ATP, ATP a lot more quickly. Therefore, they fatigue faster. They fatigue faster. Type 2 fibers are, are considered um, fast fatiguing. Okay, They fatigue a lot more quickly. Type 1 fibers, let's think about that. They don't use ATP as fast, but because of the mitochondria, they produce way more ATP. So they're making more, and they don't use as much of it as fast. So they have fatigue resistance, okay? So type two fibers are sensitive to fatigue, whereas type one fibers fatigue more slowly because they're producing ATP, a lot of it, but they're not consuming it as quickly, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now, myoglobin. Type two muscle fibers really don't have myoglobin. Myoglobin binds oxygen, but it binds it very, very tightly, meaning it doesn't give it up very easily. And it was once thought that myoglobin stored that oxygen to give it to the mitochondria, but that has been since disproven. Okay? Myoglobin does bind oxygen, but too tightly to give it up under normal homeostatic conditions. What it's thought to do is store the oxygen in case the pressure of oxygen or its concentration drops to a low enough point that it could kill the cell. In which case the myoglobin can then buffer the cell with oxygen, um, and if it runs out then it'll die. Um, and so forth. So it doesn't really play a role in the oxygen um, delivery to the mitochondria. It doesn't do that, but it's thought to act as an oxygen buffer in case the oxygen essentially runs out. Okay. There really aren't any myoglobin in type 2, okay? but there are in type 1 muscle fibers. There's a lot of myoglobin. When oxygen binds to myoglobin, there's a shift in the, in the emission of the heme moiety in the, in the myoglobin. As a result, it, 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 it looks red. So because there's a lot of myoglobin in type 1 muscle fibers, it appears red. Because there's few myoglobin or no myoglobin in type 2 muscle fibers, it just looks white. Okay. Now let's look at the contraction rate. And this is what gives this the name type 1 or slow twitch. Slow twitch, the contraction rate of type 1 is slow. Type 2 are fast twist, twitch muscle fibers, so their contraction rate is fast. Because type 2 muscle fibers have more myosin, they're able to contract faster. Because type 1 fibers have less myosin, they contract more slowly. Okay, And so those ultimately are the main differences between the two. There are a few other factors that are not indicated directly here, so let's kind of look at those. Um, the two main ones that are not indicated here are the ability of the muscle fiber to store glycogen, and as a, as a result of that, also break it down into glucose. Okay, And the other factor that we have to look at is its creatine storage, the amount of creatine that's in it, also the enzyme that reversibly phosphorylates creatine, creatine kinase, which we talked about in another video. All right, And it turns out that type 2 muscle fibers are much better at storing glycogen. 
Okay, type two fibers store it a, store a lot more of it. Okay, the enzyme that breaks down glycogen, in case this ever cropped up on an exam or something, is called glycogen phosphorylase. And we have a whole video on glycogen phosphorylase and how it works. But suffice it to say, type two fibers are going to have more glycogen and more of this enzyme glycogen phosphorylase. Also, Type 2 fibers store more creatine and have higher concentration of creatine kinase. Okay, So what does that mean? Remember what creatine kinase was used for from another video. High intensity exercises that require fast contraction. Well that would make sense why they're found in type 2 fibers. So creatine kinase, the enzyme that makes creatine phosphate, the phosphate storage molecule, is found in much higher concentrations in type 2 because it's required for fast powerlifting sprinting type of movements. Also, type 2 fibers have a much higher capacity to do glycolysis. Why? Because they have fewer mitochondria. So if they're going to need to do more glycolysis, they're going to need to access glucose much more quickly. Therefore, they need more glycogen phosphorylase and they need to store more glycogen. The glycogen can be broken down into glucose, so that gives them higher access to glucose because they're not going to be able to do mitochondrial respiration as much because they have fewer mitochondria. Okay? As a result of this, the fact that type 2 rely more on glucose and glycolytic metabolism and this phosphagen system, they're termed glycolytic fibers. So sometimes instead of fast twitch, they'll be referred to as fast glycolytic muscle fibers. So they're type 2, they're fast twitch, or glycolytic fibers. Type 1, because they have mitochondria, they don't, re they don't rely as much on glycolysis. They rely on mitochondrial respiration. So not only, in, a, in addition to being type 1 and slow twitch, they're often called oxidative fibers because their metabolism is oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. Okay, so that is a very hopefully detailed look at the differences between type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. Um, if you like this video, make sure to, to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. And we're going to do more on this type of skeletal muscle physiology in future videos. Thank you very much.